Hi everyone, my name is Anton. In the last video I briefly reviewed existing uh, one-shot model architectures. Uh, in this video I want to focus more uh, on the models that generate embeddings for images. Primarily it's Clip and Dyna V2 model. Also it includes like iJAPA models or other big pre-training uh, models that generate embeddings. In this video I will give a short of a review of main feature of architecture, but, prime, but mainly I will focus on why these models are really useful in computer vision tasks. Let's start with Clip. Uh, Clip is a model that solves the problem of minimization the distance between uh, image embedding and the text embedding. Uh, but the approach uh, is useful for dis different tasks. For example, um, the reason I love this uh, the clip the more most it uh, can minimize the distance between similar images. Uh, and because of this, of course, a clip is great for clustering. Uh, let me show how it's work on practice. Let's take a standard example. Two classes from CIFAR dataset. For example, cats and planes. Uh, let's generate clip embeddings and with nmap uh, project them in two-dimensional space. Uh, is it good or bad? Uh, but let's check uh, how good it's uh, regarding to the classes. Uh, and in my opinion, it's almost perfect. And if you consider that CIFAR dataset provide us 32 on 32 uh, pixel images, it's great. Even I can't recognize all this uh, stuff. And only like single line of training to provide this uh, image. But of course, this is clustering, you need clustering most uh, to research your data set, like to choose anomalies, to choose uh, what you miss or mistakes. Uh, but in practice, you can use clip for different tasks. Uh, like you need to run through your image catalog to choose the sim most similar pictures. Or, for example, you need to detect anomalies. Then you just take anomalies from camera. Then you just remember what is not anomaly. And then if the distance is pretty far, you just detect in this uh, events without any training. Uh, of course, uh, it's allow you to like train the small model exactly on device when all you need is just to uh, train by, based on this um, small uh, embeddings generated by the model. Uh, okay, and here is a few examples how clip works on camera. Let's take this frame as a reference. Let's go next. Uh, what's wrong with clip? Uh, it will be slower than classification model, of course. If you have the big data set, just train classification model and the classification will be better than clip embeddings and even better than clip pre-trains probably. The second problem with clip is clip generate one global feature. Uh, and this global feature is tied to entire frame. And often this is not enough. Uh, for example, if the changes are small, for example, for this image, and if I will hide my phone, for example, uh, the feature will be super close. Uh, the distance between feature will be super close. Uh, and you can't like detect small uh, changes when you change 
one point on the image or you need a lot of training uh, images to train this and this problem of clip solved by dinav2 uh, dinav2 is a network that not uh, trained to minimize the distance between uh, images uh, like image and text, it's trained to minimize the distance uh, between images in the same domain. Uh, usually, to train uh, Dina, usually uh, people use like a uh, big image and crop from this image. And uh, the network is tries to minimize this distance. As a result, the network understand context pretty well. Unlike clip, Dina generate a lot of feature for image like uh, one feature for each uh, piece of images uh, of image like 14 on 14 pixel if I remember correctly and uh, each of this feature uh, knows about surrounding uh, it uh, like uh, hold all information regarding where is this feature located so it's like the clip but for each point of your uh, image. Uh, here is the small demo how it's work. Uh, almost the same like the clip, but you can just uh, specify the point that you want track to. Let's save the feature related to the cup. In this video I use 240p resolution as input to the DINA. As you can see, the tracking is pretty stable. Of course, there are some problems, but just by one input image, it can track cup even when it became bigger or smaller. Let's test the flashlight tracking. As you can see, the tracking is pretty stable even in situation when the flashlight is completely different. Also, as you can see, I try to trigger the detection by different hands position, but it also doesn't work. And sometimes it can detect the different flash light as the target one. You may ask, how I can use this in real life? And here is an example. I put the camera looking outside my window and I take just one reference image as the reference image for the bot and it start detecting bots pretty stable when they crossing this channel. Of course, as you can see, it doesn't detect big bot or super small bots, but it's pretty interesting that even one example sometimes is enough. That's all for today. Uh, in my next video about big embedding models, I want to talk a bit about how you can run these models on embedding devices and approaches for this. Thank you for watching. Bye.